Hello and welcome to another episode of One Man's Opinion where I review theater in Broadway and Connecticut. Today's episode, I review a contemporary theater of Connecticut's production of the Lieber and Stoller Review, Smokey Joe's Cafe, directed and choreographed by Stephanie Pope Lofgren. And if you're unfamiliar with whom Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller are, they are a songwriting duo. Uh, they wrote some of the biggest hits of the 50s and 60s, including Yakety Yak and Young Blood by the Coasters, Kansas City, originally recorded by Little Willie Littlefield and popularized by Wilbur Harrison, Spanish Harlem and Stand By Me by Benny King, and uh, Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. Now, I've never been one to really enjoy jukebox shows, and I'll be honest with that, that's just a fact of who I am. There are few I really do like, but overall, I don't find them all that good, mostly due to poor books where the writer has to force songs that don't really work for a book musical into a flimsy plot. Or you get a biographical musical that covers an artist's career and or life and tries to shoehorn an entire life story and a career's worth of songs into a two and a half hour musical. Now wisely, here with Smokey Joe's Cafe, this is a review that has no plot allowing the show to focus entirely on the music and the performer's talents when it comes to representing the music. For better or worse, when it comes to that, it's hit or miss depending upon what song the performer is given. Uh, some of their talents are going to be better suited for some songs and not necessarily for others. So you try to have as diverse a cast and as uh, flexible of a cast as possible uh, when it comes to doing a show like Smokey Joe's Cafe. And with ACT of Connecticut, or ACT, and yeah, a mixed bag is a fair assessment of what this show is. I mean, it's hit and miss. I mean, some of the songs are really great. I mean, some of them are just absolutely fabulous and worth the price of admission. And then there's others where it's a struggle to pay attention for the two and a half minutes that, that you're hearing the song performed. It's in the original production, let's just start with the cast number. Uh, here we have five men and three women. In the original production of Smokey Joe's Cafe, there are nine. There's four women and five men. And uh, apparently for this production, they decided to go with three, three women instead of four. Uh, I think the show may have benefited by losing one of the guys versus one of the women, but that's I guess that's a producer director decision. This may have been due to actors' equity COVID restrictions. I don't know, uh, but it would seem that that would be the case, that, that 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 would be the only reasonable explanation that I can think of as to why you would want to cut a female part from the production. Let's start with some of the good things here. Uh, one of the good things about this production is that the cast all at least have excellent voices. And with some I say, without hyperbole, they are brilliant. Some of the performances, though they sound wonderful, there was nothing going on outside of their vocals. I, I could just close my eyes and enjoy the show just as much as if I was watching it, just because there was nothing going on. The choreography, for the most part, also is unimpressive. It's some light little moves here or there with some of the songs. There are exceptions, though particularly the acrobatic work done by Albert Guerzon, who jumps around rather nicely <laughs> and is quite a delight to watch when, he, when it comes to his dance moves. Uh, he does jailhouse rock and really tears it up. It's great. And the dance between Jordan Fife Hunt and Kelly McMillan in Spanish Harlem was also deliciously sensuous. That was re done really well. I, I was rather underwhelmed by the choreography uh through most of the show but that one i was like oh 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 that cave that's that's rather pretty i like that I, I i'm feeling this one but then there's then there's the song shimmy which is an isley brothers song the choreography that one the choreography could have been toned down a little in all my experiences of seeing dances that involved shimmying this was not it <laughs> this was more of a frantic flailing about at times versus actually doing a simple shimmy and seductive kind of shimmy dance. It just, it was, it was a mess. It, it hurt to watch. 
and it hurts some of the people around me. Overall, as an ensemble, the men were the more consistent, uh, which they particularly shined in the classic Drifters and George Benson song on Broadway. The arrangement is similar to the George Benson version than the Drifters version. They nailed it. It was fantastic. I loved it. All five guys shined. The way the, the turntable stage worked with them and and their investment into just popping out one great tune was fantastic to watch. Uh, the two real shining stars of the show, though, I got to give them credit because they really elevated the show beyond anything else that was going on on stage, are Courtney Long and Aviance Hoyles. Long's acting is the best on stage. Long's acting elevates everyone that she's working with. Whatever number she's in, she makes other, everyone else better. That's how solid of an actress she was on stage. And on top of that, she has a fantastic voice. And particularly during the reprise of the Drifter song, Fools Fall in Love, she nails it. She was superb. And as good as she was when it came to singing the song, Hoyles brought the house down with his performance of I Who Have Nothing. Uh, definitely giving it more of the Luther Vandross touch and inspiration versus the original Benny King version. And seriously, I got chills. Rarely, hardly ever do I get chills from a show. <laughs> and Hoyles, man, you had my hair was standing on end. You were that awesome. That's what he gave me Sunday afternoon, and it was phenomenal. He was also who exhibited the most concise movements when it came to the ensemble choreography, uh, moving with a little bit more precision. Now, I don't want to put too much of the blame on the performers. Uh, a lot of this falls on Stephanie Pope Lofgren's shoulders. Now, I, I loved her work when she directed uh, In the Heights over at Playhouse on Park, but I would have liked to have seen her get a little bit more out of the cast in this production. I should also state that I love Jack Meller's scenic design. That stage is awesome. It looks fantastic. I loved the concept of this New York City side street is kind of what I imagine it as with a little cafe on one side of the stage. It's beautiful. It's great. It's awesome. Thumbs up to Meller. Justin Williams is also Great. I, I particularly liked him uh, in the, the song Stand By Me and the Clovers and the Searchers song, uh, Love Potion Number 9. He was wonderful in, when taking the lead on those numbers. And he really does kind of work really good as a uh, ensemble lead uh, in, the, in, the large, in, the, in the group numbers when he steps forward and kind of brings people out kind of not in the exact same way as Long does, but uh, he works well as a lead vocalist with a backup group behind him, supporting him, versus Hoyles, who, when he's just on stage by himself singing I Have Nothing, is he just dominates the stage. And So yes, I, I recommend Smokey Joe's Cafe, but with reservations. There are going to be numbers that you're going to be sitting there and wondering, when does the song end? Well, on the other side, you're going to have songs that you're like, Oh, please give me more. And it's it's kind of a 50-50 toss-up. It's, it's a mixed bag. But where the show shines, it really shines to the point where I'm able to recommend coming and see Smokey Joe's Cafe. So that's one man's opinion of a contemporary theater of Connecticut's production of Smokey Joe's Cafe. Leave yours in the comment below. And be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And tell others about this channel. My next review will be another musical review over at Goodspeed Opera House and their production of A Grand Night for Singing, which is a Rodgers and Hammerstein review. And that review should be coming out by the end of this week. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the theater.